This episode of It's Me or the Dog. I feel awful. I feel like such a bad mom. Victoria finds a couple in complete turmoil. Your dog is ruining my life. It's your fault. Their dogs have turned their dream life <laughs> into a living nightmare. <laughs> oh my god. Did he just bite you? Yeah, he got me. Xander Bit, our cleaning lady. It's absolutely mortifying. The couple is headed for disaster. You roll your eyes whenever Lindsay's talking. Listen, That's insulting. I don't want to live the rest of my life like this. I got it. I'm taking charge now. You listen to me. The only way that Xander can go is if he's put down. <laughs> Situation is out of control. It's got to stop. I need to move out then. I need to be on my own. Love can only go so far. And Lindsay? I live in this apartment with my boyfriend, Jason, on the Upper East Side. I'm an accountant for an interior design firm, and Jason is a lawyer practicing on his own. Come on. Ever since I met her, it's just been a lot of fun. We both like to socialize and go for dinner and drinks. Cheers. Cheers to everybody. Cheers, Cheers to everyone. We go to Central Park all the time. I love living uptown. Jason's family has a house in Connecticut on a lake, which is a lot of fun because they have a boat. Our life is fabulous. Yeah. We have one thing that we argue about. Jason's dog, Xander. Xander is playful. I love that about him. It makes my day better. Every day, I'm literally being bitten by Xander. And it really upsets me. Lindsay has fun hanging out with Xander. No, no, no. She does love him. I think things are blown out of proportion. Xander is really a loving dog. Xander bit our cleaning lady. Oh my god! She was bleeding. He has peed on one neighbor's bed, peed on another neighbor's rug, and then he bit another neighbor's dog. It's absolutely mortifying. You know, it is what it is. A lot of our neighbors like to play with Xander. The people without dogs don't like Xander too much. Norman is my dog. And the worst part for me is how my dog has been affected by Xander's behavior. Xander. As soon as Xander starts barking, Norman starts to shake and cower away, and he either go under the couch or under the bed. Norm, it's OK. My dog will never be well behaved unless you help me train him. Lindsay and I have hired three trainers now. Two of them have quit. Xander! It is not my responsibility to train Xander because I trained my dog. And this was not my dog. Xander is ripping apart our relationship. You always laugh. You laugh when he bites me. You think it's funny? Lindsay needs to get over the whole situation that we're in right now. No. What do you mean, no? That's Norman's bear. It's OK when Norman takes That's... Xander's bear? Enough. I don't know how I could ever plan on ever getting married or having a baby around this dog. I love Jason, but it's got to be me or Xander. Dog trainer Victoria Stillwell is Jason and Lindsay's last home. What? Hello. Hi. Hi. Ooh. Come on, Xander. Hi, Come on. Xander. Xander in. Come on. Oh. Oh, this Hi, is Norman. Hi, Norman. How are you? Oh, we're a bit jumpy, aren't we? I can say hello. Nice to meet you. Coming into the apartment, I have a Yorkshire Terrier coming up to me, barking and jumping up at me. And there's a little wild look in his eye. Hi, good Jason. to meet you. Very good nice to meet, to meet you, too. Whoa. These are the little guys. That's Xander and this is Norman, wherever you want. Yeah, he can see you. Hello, sweetheart. So, look, what's the problem with these dogs? Oh, wait. <laughs> Where's Norman? Well, Norman's hiding. OK. Right now, shaking in the corner under the couch. Xander is a biter. Oh. Is he? Oh, yes. He actually he did leave a mark and broke skin recently with a cleaning lady. You're lucky you didn't get sued. Yes. He doesn't like when people come or go. OK. Um, so whenever anybody leaves, he freaks out. When you try to leave, you literally get bit. So uh, leave. I want to okay. see what he does. Sure. Just stay. And he does that every single time. There are times where it's worse than that. When I come into a house, it is my job, right from the word go, to stop the dog rehearsing the negative behavior that it's been doing. Have you ever gone in 
gone out and come back in again. Yeah, yeah. Jason's That's with what the last dog trainer Okay. To de desensitize I, him to the Yeah, dog. and that I think that's really, really important. I've tried a bunch of different dog trainers and that didn't work. We need Victoria to show us, you know, what we have to do. We definitely need her help. We gotta turn this area of such angst for him into an area of fun. Like this. Playing go find. Good. I want to play games in the front door, feed treats in the front door. I want to show Xander that people going through the front door doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to leave. Then I just like to open the door and not even go out. Good boy. Go find it. You are going to have to do this all the time until he is no longer reacting at the door. Good boy. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think Victoria clearly knows what she's doing. She, you know, she exited the apartment without getting bit. I mean, I feel like we're in great hands. Lindsay, in order to get Xander to a better place, you are going to have to do this all the time. Every time we open the every, door, we have to do this. Every, every single, single time. time. Or even, it's okay, I got it. You don't have to start now saying, I'm not. okay, you got it. No, you are. Okay, you're right, I am. The time for recriminations, the time for arguing, the time for blame, the time for apologies, that's over. We're now gonna work together as a team so that the dogs can succeed. Mm -hmm. I'm taking charge now, you listen to me. All righty. You don't only do it when you're going out. You do it all day. The tension between the couple is clear, and Victoria wants to find out where it's coming from. What do you do? I'm, a, I'm an attorney. Attorney, okay, so you work long hours? Yeah, I work fairly long hours. Why did you get a dog? Um, a lot of reasons. I just wanted one. Um, Your ex-girlfriend wanted ex one. Ex-girlfriend. So he was left for long hours? Yes. Is yeah. this behavior at the door because he doesn't want people going? He did it from the beginning, from the first day I, I got him. Well, I took the time to train my dog when I first got him. I resent the fact that now I have to train a dog that I never bought just because he was too lazy and didn't train him. I was too lazy or I didn't particularly have the time necessary to do it. I'm seeing Lindsay and Norman and Jason and Xander. I see blame on both sides, excuses being made for the dog's behavior. Now it's come to the point because I have put my foot down and I'm saying that I don't want to live the rest of my life like this, that now we are here. It took about eight months for Jason to be like, okay, fine, let's get a trainer. And you didn't listen to any of his suggestions. I, he didn't even talk to me. Lindsay and Jason are at odds. I did not partake in any of the training. You guys were outside of the apartment the entire time. I can't tell you how frustrating it is for me. All right, well, I'm here now. Yes, <laughs> thankfully. With things getting heated inside, Victoria wants to see how the dogs and owners behave outdoors. There's a restaurant up here. We could just sit outside and maybe eat something and see what they're like. Yeah, sure. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. You always do. Xander. OK, relax. Xander. Xander was barking like crazy, not sitting still, disrupting us, disrupting everybody around him. Just a complete disaster. Xander. He's not behaving. I'm going to take him upstairs. It's really like annoying. Come on, buddy. Come on. It's not fun. It's no, it's fun. not. Jason's made it very clear that he's not, he would never get rid of Xander. Hopefully, something's gonna work. If not, we have to have a serious conversation because it's not, it can't stay like this. So if what I do doesn't, doesn't work, that's a lot of pressure. Back at home, it's also lunchtime for Norman and Xander. There are times where Xander will go after Norman's food and Norman will not eat and he will run and hide. And there are times where Xander will try to take human food and that's reason for us to try to take it away, but we can't. There's been instances where he's jumped up on a table, grabbed a rib right out of somebody's mouth. Xander may get wild around food, but Norman has a very different reaction. Come on. He's shaking. And do you see this, like, when Come he lifts on. his one paw and he shakes, he's just scared. Come on. Here, do you want to give Xander Come his ball? Come here, Normie. Normie, no. Come on. Come here. Come on, it's okay. Norman's back under the couch now and didn't eat. He didn't eat. Try to take the bowl away. Oh my God. No, 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 don't get bitten, don't get did bitten. Did he just bite you? I did. You're bleeding. Huh? Yeah, you got me. All right. Oh my gosh. I wasn't even trying to take the food. <laughs> Xander's aggression around food only serves to worsen Norman's mood. This is what distresses me so much. But that 
is awful. That is a dog that I see when I go into a, an abuse situation. That is total and complete shutdown numbing submission. I hate it. Yeah, I mean, it upsets me too. I know. I can see it. <laughs> I can see it. It's so important to me and I feel awful. I feel like such a bad mom. Norman shut down. Xander is completely over the top, biting people. Lindsay can't take it anymore. The situation is out of control. It's got to stop. Things don't improve. What does that mean for you? I don't know. Lindsay's heartbroken over how her boyfriend's dog, Xander, is bullying her dog, Normie. I can see it. <laughs> I can see it. If things don't improve, what does that mean for you? I don't know. Now, dog trainer Victoria Stillwell has to find a way to bring these dogs and this couple back together. But look, I'm here. <laughs> and I'm going to use everything that I have to make it a better situation for both dogs and for you. Thank you. OK? Because this is more than just making a show for me. This will change our lives. Yeah. And so both children, as it were, are going to become equally important to you. Lindsay and Jason need to get on board and stop the bickering. Stop, oh, I do this and you do this and you're wrong. No, I'm right. And listen. Victoria clearly needs to bring peace back into this household. So she takes everyone up to the high-rise rooftop where she introduces the latest Manhattan trend. Hi. This is Susie Tuttleman, and she oh, teaches yeah. Doga, yeah. Oh, God, which is partnership guys. yoga with your dog. OK. I was like, Doga? I've never even done yoga. I want you to, to get you working and have a connection with your animal. And I think that's really important, because that's what's lacking. So Susie, I want you to take it away. OK. Yoga means to bond. It means to bind. And yoga is about making sure that you are happy with yourself, and then your dog feels that, and then they become that way, too. So the first thing you want to do with your pet is to hold their spine along your spine, attaching like their chakras to our chakras, and just hold and just stillness and breathe. I thought it was, you know, a little crazy and a little wacky. Um, right you know into me? their Look face. Them Take them onto your legs. See if you can just place them right on your legs and lift up your legs and balance them. So a little trust here. Definitely never thought I'd be doing yoga or doga. Breathe, inhale, let them feel your calm. Lift up one leg behind you. Good boy. Good, good, good Norman. Boy. Norman really needs to have more moments where he feels secure. It's lovely to see him open up. Good boy. Good boy, Norman. I've noticed that, Lindsay, you're quite tense, especially when Xander's misbehaving. You get quite tense, then you're quite tense when you argue over your dog's behavior. And your dogs feel that. You can't really train a dog if you're hyped up, because he's going to feel it. Xander spends so much of his time being reactive and in a state of alert that I really want to do something that's going to calm him down. Kiss him right here. You go, mm -hmm. you give him a big kiss. Yeah, I would just bring him in and then kind of Hook underneath, yeah. OK, good dog. He's getting, no, he's getting okay. upset. OK, he's OK. giving you stress signals. Let him go now. That's so, it, he's had enough. Xander doesn't exactly have a great attention span, so it was not surprising that he wasn't very into the doga. He has to learn to be handled by you and to trust you. So showing him that actually putting these in positions is OK, I think is really going to help him. After some time to relax, Xander makes his way back to Jason. Just lie down and see what he does. There you go. Xander is really liking exactly what you're doing there right now. And I think that's, that's lovely. Yeah. That's building a connection. I felt Xander more relaxed as as it went on a little bit. He was starting to get into it. It was cool. Good oh boy. Awesome. Oh, that was a nice thing. Being lifted off the ground, being handled in different ways, does take a lot of trust between dog and owner, and it can help build up trust. And we say namaste. And then a big thank you. Yay! Yay! Xander responded a lot better than I thought he would. 
If they could continue this, I think it'll help to de-stress them and their dogs. Victoria is charged up for a day of intense training, but she discovers that all the peace and calm that was established during Doga was unfortunately short-lived. So how have things been going? I got bit. You did? My arm. Here. And I told Jason it was the last time that Xander was going to bite me. I walked into a lion's den with Jason and Lindsay. The tension was palpable. If the dog needs a muzzle on a 24-hour basis, I'm OK with that. Jason's not, but I am. I'm not being bit anymore. Sit down. Sit down. I want to talk. If I don't get Jason and Lindsay in line, there's nothing I can do to help the dogs. The fact of the matter is, is you still left my dog here, called your dog. Normie, Normie, come here. And you leave my dog here by himself. I was carrying the laundry bag that was full, and that's when he jumped up on the laundry bag and bit me. When you know that he's going to be upset and jump and bark and bite, and you just leave and don't try to do anything. It's my fault okay. the dog bit me when I left. It's my, my fault that I was carrying the laundry bag to the door so I could get detergent. You roll your eyes whenever Lindsay's talking. Listen, That's insulting. She doesn't do anything. But I want to. But... It's been your dog for four years. All right, I, 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 I've been biding my time, just looking and seeing how things are going. And I, I've got to put it down on the table yeah, for you. Yeah, please, yeah. What I see here really distresses me. My aim is to get both of you to learn to love each other's dogs. Are you ever, how, how do you feel about Xander at this point? Are I can't you stand him. You can't, right. I'm not stomach him. OK. I'm not putting up with it anymore. It's the last time that I got bit. Done. The only way that Xander can go is if he's put down. That's it. You cannot rehome this liability. And don't even think about having children with this dog around the way he is. That's the reality of the situation. I'm being totally truthful with you. I have no idea where that leaves us. I don't know. <laughs> so, situation is serious. And I'm telling you, you are going to have to put in 50% of the work. These are your dogs, both of you. You are going to have to follow through. You are going to have to be consistent. And you cannot even slip up once. You don't have any choice. Both of you have no choice. How do you feel about Xander at this point? Are I can't stand him. I can't. Right. Do not stomach him. Victoria is helping a warring Manhattan couple whose dislike for each other's dog is threatening their relationship. And I'm telling you, you are going to have to put in 50% of the work. These are your dogs, both of you. You don't have any choice. Both of you have no choice. One of the most critical issues in the house is Norman refusing food because of his fear of Xander. This is going to be something that's going to help you okay. feed the dogs. Norman's got to be comfortable about eating food in his own place. And I think separating the dogs is the way to go. And what you're going to do is that I want one of you to feed the, your dogs in the kitchen and one of you to feed the dog outside. It's probably better that Xander's in the kitchen. You take that, go in there. By separating the dogs, Victoria hopes to ease Norman's fear of Xander, allowing him to eat. Let's get Norman out. Come on. Good boy. Come on. Come on. Good boy. He's now wondering what's going on right. there, so he doesn't want to eat. That's fine. Doesn't yeah. matter at the moment. Do you think it's because of the gate? Yeah, the gate's a different thing, but also he knows that Norman's eating too. Now Norman's eating, which is fantastic. Xander now isn't. Xander's not eating with the gate in his face. It's bothering him. Move away from the food. See if Norman still eats and come over here. This is nice in itself that he's now confident eating. You're not even close to him. Yeah. But because we've got rid of Xander. Because Xander's away. I think it's really important that dogs feel comfortable when they're eating. Good boy, Norman. And if he's not going to eat until Norman's eaten, that's fine. I was really happy today that Norman's finally eating. If Xander doesn't want to eat because the gate's there, well, then he'll eat a little after Norman. Playtime. All I hear from Lindsay is my dog, my dog, my dog Normie, Norman this, Norman that. I don't want to hear any more your dog, my dog. I want Xander and Lindsay to work together. Stay, sit, and you don't say sit down, you just say sit. When I saw Jason holding Norman, I wanted to be holding Norman. <laughs> stay, Xander, stay, stay. 
there's a lot of times he just doesn't listen to you. Right. I want Lindsay to be able to work with Xander as much as possible. And I think if they do, that's really going to improve the all-round relationship between them. But Xander doesn't seem to be too happy with Victoria's plan. He's humping your leg. That's how you interrupt it. You can, you can, you can. Come your hands. That's it. Good. Nice. Come on. Come here. Come. Good. Try it. Sit. Now tell him to stay. Stay. Wait. Stay. Deliver the treat. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. There's got to be a lot more experience of you handling Norman and you handling Xander. And I think in that way, you're going to get much better connection. Right. Okay, okay. so you look at Norman. Sit, Xander. Norm, you want a treat? Good Stay. boy. Xander. Stay. Xander. If the couple can invest more time and energy in working with each other's dogs, they really will go a long way, because the dogs will not just be dependent upon their owner, they'll be able to listen and understand both of them. After making progress at home with Xander and Norman, Victoria tackles Xander's issues at Jason's parents' vacation home. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. It's lovely. Look at this. When Jason and Lindsay are coming up with their dogs to the house in Connecticut, we prepare ourselves, try relaxation techniques, because we know that once they're here, the weekend is not going to be relaxing. Hi. Xander, hi. Right. Hello. Hey. Hi, hi I'm Victoria. Hi, nice Victoria. to meet yeah. you. Yeah. Hello. For Russ, the biggest problem when Xander is here is just the fact that we can't relax. Xander barks a lot, and, and of course, you can't leave. So he bites yeah. you if you leave? Yeah. Worse Two. with her, but he still bites me. A worse yes. with you? Oh, yes. Yeah. I've been bitten by Xander probably 15 to 20 times, or maybe more. But not uh, as much as me. But not as much as Terry. There's really no set of rules so that you know, we know what to do before we leave yeah. or while we're leaving. Nobody really knows what to do. To put an end to Xander's assaults, Victoria shows Jason's parents how to distract him from the door. Hi, Xander. You can take this. Now you throw it away. Go get good. It. And each time you do it, you just put your hand on the door. Nice. Love it. Very good. Now, get the ball. And this time, throw it and go out the door. Go. Throw. And just go. Good. Now it's Jason's mom's turn. Now, when you throw the treat next time, you just put your hand on the door handle. Having Victoria teaching so that we can do the same kind of behavior here, I think is great. Jason's mom and dad were brilliant at the door training. They really got it, and they were really good. And now they can see, in a short space of time, the change in Xander's behavior. And hopefully, that's going to give them confidence to continue with it. Good. Unfortunately, Jason's parents' enthusiasm isn't shared by everyone. Lindsay and Jason aren't that focused on the training. They're looking at their cell phones. They're walking around. There's so much negativity between these two. Coming up. Your dog is ruining my life. It's your fault. The tension hits an all-time high. I need to move out then. I need to be on my own. Training at Jason's parents' house is going well, but not for Jason and Lindsay. There's definitely a lot of tension since we started the training. We haven't been talking too much. I think we're kind of giving each other a little bit of space. This definitely isn't easy on either of us. Victoria gets Jason's parents' perspective on the issues Jason and Lindsay are having. I don't like to say anything bad about my son, but... No, no, this is the but, job. But gross. they both have to be on the same page. Right? And have you seen that they haven't been on the same page? Yes. Yeah. OK. Not at all. Jason will say, well, you know, Lindsay, what's the sense of getting a trainer if you're not going to work with the dog after I leave? You're just wasting your money. And then Lindsay will go, well, listen, my dog's fine. You know, it's your dog. It's crazy. Do you think Jason's been reinforcing bad behavior? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because okay. I think he loves the, the aggressiveness of the dog. I think he really needs to be trained to train the dog. It's really interesting to hear Jason's parents' point of view. They're very, very forthcoming. They tell it like it is, which I love. Tell me what you're thinking right now. My dog's under the bed. I know. We have to get Xander's behavior under control, because if we don't, Norman is, n is, is never going to get better. That's not an option. Right. Well, Xander's your dog, by the way, too. While she may acknowledge that Xander is her dog, too, 
Jason's upset because Lindsay doesn't seem to care that now Xander has problems eating. Since we finally put up a gate so my dog could eat in peace, Jason's not happy. Welcome to my world. Xander did not eat this morning or yesterday morning. Norman's eating just fine because he's by himself. Would it be a problem if we could take away the gate and if I can control no Xander in the kitchen without him coming out and bothering Norman, if that's acceptable? Now you understand what it's like to have your dog not want to eat in front of the other dog. So, but you want my dog and, but now, to, and now you don't you want, want me gate. to feel that way. And now you don't want the gate but we're trying because your dog's not eating. So we're I've been trying. living with my dog not eating in front of Xander, so now and it's I can feed him at work. So it's no, payback. I'm you want you, me to feel I've the way you felt for the past year, but and now you don't want the gate. It seems like they have to get back at each other. Still not in agreement. They're still not on the same page. You, you're happy with the gate because you see my. The problem suffering was with that the dog. my dog wasn't eating, so the gate solved the problem of my dog not eating. So now my dog is eating. Okay, but yeah. you that want the was gate the problem to stay of the without giving anything a chance. Let me answer this question now. First of all, Lindsay. Get off this my dog thing. It's killing me. My dog, my dog, my dog. Your dog is ruining my life, so don't say it's killing me. No, don't then say I'll move out, Lindsay. Dog, my dog. I, exactly. Like, what have I said to you? I know, it, I know you're frustrated. I know you are. I see it. I feel it. I understand. Believe you me, I do. I do. But you've got to accept Xander, because he's in your home. I want the fighting to stop. It's, it's hard, it's very hard. I'd like it to stop. At this point in our relationship, I mean, listen, love can only go so far. It's nonstop, my dog, and now you see how it is, and I want it the gate. If she's not gonna help me, I need to move out then. I need to be on my own. Now you understand what it's like to have your dog not want to eat. Victoria is caught in another argument between Lindsay and Jason about Jason's dog, Xander. Your dog is ruining my life, so don't say it's killing me. No, don't then say your out, dog, my dog. What is it with these two? Can they not put the past behind them and start working as a team? If she's not going to help me, I need to move out then. I need to be on my own. I said, if I can take away the gate. The problem was that Norman was not eating at home. The gate has solved the problem. Obviously, if it, it if it bothers Norman, he's not going to eat. Then it's not an option. The solution is we're going to keep the gate there so that Norman can eat in peace. Dana doesn't eat when the gate's there. Fine, but Lindsay, you have such a brick wall just where Xander's concerned. It's he's almost causing like, a nightmare in my life. I know he's no, causing it, but you're but not I'm helping going... it. <sighs> okay. You're not helping it. I am. You think my life? No, is no, no, not now. But it's your fault. That's it, that's totally irrelevant. The fact of the matter is, is we're in this situation now together. Okay, I'm trying. I understand. Okay, so so good, but we have to try on all kinds of levels now. I hope that we're gonna find a common ground, and I hope that we will eventually come to be on the same page. I don't know if we are. I feel like Lindsay's frustrated with the training process. It's difficult for her to accept constructive criticism about what she's doing. If I can't get Lindsay and Jason online, I can't help the dogs. So I wanted to talk to you. What are your frustrations right now? Jason has always minimized the bad behavior. For the first time, you know, Jason saw what it was like for his dog not to want to eat. It's like, welcome to my world. I'm usually the scapegoat for Jason. Um, you know, it's Lindsay doesn't put in the effort. Lindsay's not going to help me. But this is a result of his lack of training. We now have to change our lives and the way we live on a daily basis. Yeah. This training every day, the certain procedures every day, this is exhausting for both Jason and I. I don't know how long we can actually maintain it. This dynamic, the four of us isn't gonna work. Gander can't be around children. That's huge. I wanna have kids, and not in 10 years from now. You recognize that you have to change of course. some things. Yours and Jason's relationship is obviously in jeopardy, and the most important thing you need to do is to communicate well about your dogs, and that you try not to be riled up in front of them, because the more tense you are, obviously the dogs feel your tension. Are you worried that if it doesn't work, then your relationship will be done? I'm very worried if Xander doesn't get trained. With the stakes so high for the couple, Victoria is determined to give them as many tools as possible for their success. This is a dry erase board. It's going to rely on both of you working together to create a schedule. The schedule is just another tool to get them on the same page. 
Because less arguments between them is going to mean less tension, it's going to mean the dogs are calmer. What are we starting with? Waking up? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, right from so the beginning. Wake up, walk the dogs. So who's going to walk the dogs? Usually me. Usually you. Okay, so Norman's coming to work with you. Uh-huh. So feed both dogs and then pee walk. Yeah. Okay, so Jason plays the go finds it to leave. We need to really just try to stick to what you know, Vic has taught us and her schedule and not argue about who's right, who's wrong, and try to, you know, set the ship in the right direction. I'll grab Xander and I'll take them both for a walk. Are you back at this point? Probably by this point, you know, seven or eight o'clock. So are you able to do any of the walking or not? I can do the long walk when I get home, or we can do it together. I was surprised how this is going. They're actually communicating and they're on the same page regarding the dogs. Do you know, you actually got through that without arguing about the, about the dogs. <laughs> this schedule's got to go where you're gonna see it every day. Bridge. And this schedule means, gosh, really no arguments. I wanna do some more advanced training with your dogs. And Lindsay, we're gonna work with Xander. I want you to take Norman out so right. we can work with Xander in here. Can they just go in the bedroom, Norman and Jason? No, they're not gonna go in the bedroom, they're gonna go out. Oh, they're leaving the apartment? They're leaving the apartment. Okay. And I want to show you what Xander can do. Okay. Because I think if you work with him more, you might have that bond. Okay. There might be a little bit in your heart that actually opens up and lets Xander in. Okay. He's going to be fine. Oh, boy, go with Daddy. Norman doesn't usually want to go with Jason, and that's upsetting for me. And then I feel guilty for making Norman go with Jason when he doesn't want to. Look at him, clinging on for dear life. Lord, <laughs> don't let me go. Okay, oh, Mama, please. No, no, no. Okay, no. Norman's going to be fine. No, I know. Bye-bye. Okay, I want to do a bit of target training with Xander because I think he's really going to like it and I think it's going to help him in a lot of areas of his life. It's also going to be really good for Lindsay to see Xander learning and learning with her. Good boy. I'm teaching him targeting. Targeting is really good. Touch. Just to get a dog um, used to having hands coming towards him. Touch. Good boy. Touch. Good boy. See how quickly he learns. Xander is a smart dog, and I knew he'd find it easy to do the target training. I didn't quite know how quick he would be, and he surprised even me. I had to do it maybe twice, and he got it. Now, what I'll do is I'll put my hand a little further away to see if he actually goes over to the hand, targets it, and comes back and gets the treat. Touch. Good. Touch. Good. That is advanced for a dog to do that. And in such a quick amount of time, it's amazing. OK. Xander, here. Touch. And if he doesn't do it, wait. Touch. Now wait. If you watch him and his eyes are, like, going everywhere. But just wait and see. Touch. Don't tell him to come touch. Oh. Good boy. See, he knew what he needed to do, but he was like, oh, shall I do it now? And then he's like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Xander, touch. Good boy. Xander really seemed to have taken to it. He was getting it almost every time. Hi, where did you go, with Daddy? He's so excited. Where did you go, with Daddy? Oh, I think that, you know, Victoria and Lindsay and Xander all working together drives home the fact that she's really gotta help me train Xander on a daily basis. Touch. Good boy. The touch game, do it when you can. Right. Because, because it's so beneficial. Okay. There's no divide anymore. You're really beginning to work with each other's dogs and understand it, each other's dogs. Mm -hmm. Touch. Good boy. To build on Jason and Lindsay's progress, Victoria has one more challenge to foster real team spirit for the couple. I'm sure you're wondering why I brought you here. <laughs> what does boating have to do with training dogs, but I want to get you working as a team. So we're going to be rowing, and I want Lindsay to row, but I also don't want Lindsay to see anything. Uh-oh. <laughs> so I have this little blindfold here. You're going to rely completely 100% on Jason. Lindsay and Jason are both pretty bullheaded, but I want Lindsay to learn how to take direction from Jason and to trust him. And I want Jason to be able to communicate in a way that he doesn't frustrate Lindsay. Oh, my god. <laughs> okay, Jason, take us away. All right, you need to go backwards. <laughs> I don't know which way to row. With your left hand. Which is my, but your my left. left or your, your left. left. 
No, no, no. No, no, no. Away. <laughs> the opposite way. That's Perfect. it. There oh we go. Oh, my God. Jason's communication needs to be a bit more effective. I screwed you up. No way. Get more with your right. That's good, honey. <laughs> now we're just doing around, circles. Around, around, around in circles. It's okay, beautiful. Okay, always away from me. I know. No. Lindsay's a controlling person, not in every aspect of her life, but that's her personality. It's tough for her a little bit to let me start of sort of take control. <gasps> Don't worry about it. We're okay. Sorry. A little more with your right. Just right. There we go. Oh, no, we are there going some speed. Now a little more left. Ooh. Perfect. At last, Lindsay and Jason are working together. If they can do this with their dogs, they'll be able to achieve everything that they've set out to achieve. In and out. There we go. It was definitely a little hard getting used to being blindfolded and taking direction. My parents aren't going to believe this. Well, they will on TV. <laughs> <laughs> but Jason helped me find a good rhythm, and it was nice to trust Jason a little more. And uh, it, it was like one part of my brain relaxing. Your dogs pick up on every single nuance of your behavior. When you argue, that stresses them out. When you're tense, that stresses them out. You could do this with your dogs. You are three quarters of the way there. And we really are a good team. You so. are a good team. We are a good team. I think today's exercise was, was really good. I think it was really effective in driving home. You know, you guys have to talk. You need to communicate, and you need to work together. Oh, my gosh. It was so nice to see you smile with each other. It let me let go of a little bit of control. We kind of got out of our element, and it was nice to have a little break. You're doing a great job, honey. Oh my gosh, that's the first time I've ever heard a compliment coming out of you. Jason, you do have a difficult dog here. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes it even more important for you guys to be able to work together. Right. Good boy, Xander. And I want lovely, lovely, I love okay. that. We've been told by a professional what we need to do. So there's no, you know, oh, well, I think this is better. No, I think this is better. Now we know what's better from Victoria. Lindsay, tell me what you feel about Xander. Are you able to say Xander is our dog? We have two dogs, Norman and Xander. There we God, go. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear you say that. I think this whole experience has definitely helped us as a couple. I think we both feel more confident about the ability to train our dogs and make our lives better together. Let's go. Goodbye, Jason. Bye. Thank and you so I'll much. See you hopefully. Thank you well, so much. I'm really... going to be watching you. I'm. I'm. <laughs> I'm hoping you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're like, no way. Come on. Oh. Let's go. Go on, Dad. Good. You continue to do the training with Xander as much as possible and let him into your heart. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. I really, really hope that they embrace what we've done and go forward with it because their dogs are worth it. And so are they. Thank you so much for your and time. You are welcome and best of luck, all right? Thank you. All right, bye. It's been a couple of weeks since I left Jason and Lindsay, and things have really turned around for the couple. I think the biggest success since Victoria has left has been the Go Find It game. All right, so let's go try to do some laundry. Okay. I haven't left the apartment without playing it once. Go find it. Good boy. The Go Find It is, is definitely working. Go find it. It's been amazing, and we have ease going into and out of our apartment. He's not getting to that, you know, upset level. We're not getting bit. He's not barking like a maniac. Who's a good boy? That was so nice. It's fantastic that Jason and Lindsay can finally leave without being bitten. Now, guests can visit them safely. Feeding Xander and Norman is no longer a hot button issue in this house. OK, Xander, you're going to eat there. OK, come here. You can eat over here. Come on, buddy. Come here, Norman. Go eat. Come here, Normie. Come on. The baby gate is a fantastic tool to help keep the peace. Good boy. Good boy, Xander. We are keeping the gate. The gate is not going anywhere. <laughs> and as long as Xander eats, it's kind of a win-win. Makes a world of difference. Dogs eat twice a day, and now they're both kind of eat, they're able to eat the same time and in peace. Good boy. Good boy. To see her happy because her dog is actually not suffering as much is definitely a good feeling. If the couple continue to use it, Norman will become more and more confident around Xander. Oh, boy. It's great to see that Lindsay and Jason have kept up with Doga because it's going to help relax them and their dogs. 
Do the other way on this arm. Good boy. Norman's OK with the doga because lifting his arms up and lifting his back legs up, it's kind of like relaxing. I think it's, you know, past the stretching is good for them. Good boy, Norman. Touch. Good boy, Xander. And much to Jason's delight, Lindsay and Xander have continued to build on their bond, bringing everyone closer together. Since Victoria left, life is a little easier. Touch. Good boy. Come here. We went from arguing every day to now, like, getting along and, and really having fun together. Touch. Touch one. Good boy, Xander. Xander's got the game good. The my dog, your dog statements are finally a thing of the past. Everybody stay. I definitely think we're on the right track as far as progress being made with training, and hopefully things will only get better. You're making progress, little man. Yeah. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.